Hi, I'm Joan Cartan Hansen, and welcome to Science Trek, the web show. And welcome to the Centennial Observatory at the Herrett Center for Arts and Science at the College of Southern Idaho in Twin Falls. Joining me now to answer your questions about exoplanets are Nick Ziegler, an astrophysicist and the chief technologist for NASA's Exoplanet Exploration Program, and Tiffany Meshkat, an astrophysicist and postdoctoral scholar in the Exoplanetary Science Initiative. Thank you both for being here. Thank you. Yeah, we're happy to be here. Okay, let's go to your questions. Hi, my name is London. My question is, how do we find exoplanets? There are many different ways that we search for planets around other stars. Some of the most successful methods have used uh, even the smallest telescopes on Earth. We use these telescopes to find the faint signature of a planet uh, passing in front of its star, and the star dims uh, ever so slightly. By using these techniques, uh, astronomers have managed to find uh, nearly m more than 3,400 planets. Let me show you uh, a demonstration, if I will. Okay, so the technique that Tiffany described is called the transit technique, and we've all looked at the stars in, in the night sky, and if other than the, the fact that they twinkle, they actually keep the same brightness. But just imagine th this ball in my hand is the star, and if, you're, if we're lucky, there might be a planet that just crosses the face of that star, and when it does that, our very sensitive instruments will be able to detect that the brightness of the star dimmed just for a few seconds, sometimes maybe for a few minutes. And then if you wait long enough, it'll come around again, and then again, and then we infer the presence of that planet. What's amazing, though, is we never actually see the planet. What we see is the brightness of the star dimming. So it's an indirect technique, but we're uh, confident that these are planets orbiting the star. My name is Rose and my question is why are they called exoplanets? Exoplanet is the shortened version for the words extrasolar planet and extra meaning it's actually outside of our own solar system. So these are planets that we're finding around other stars. And so and to date we found more than 3,400 planets around the other stars. What's really exciting about this uh, the past few years is that we've discovered using the Kepler Space Telescope uh, that we think just about every other star has at least one planet. Uh, and, and so even though we've only found 3,000 planets so far, we'll need uh, a lot of help over the next few years. Hopefully some of you will uh, help us out in finding all the remaining planets around all these stars. My name is Amelia. My question is, do exoplanets have water on them? Well, we've already discovered a, a, a large batch of exoplanets that do have water. Um, some of these planets are giant gas planets, very similar to uh, our own Jupiter, where we have actually detected uh, water vapor in their atmosphere. Of course, what we really want to find is liquid water flowing on the surface of, of rocky planets. We haven't done that just yet. But there's another interesting technique that uh, has confirmed to us that we think we have found water. Some of you may have learned in school the, uh, the concept of density. So density is mass divided by volume. And in, in the technique where we discover planets by the wobble method, where the planet is wobbling with the star, we could infer its mass. My name is Ben and my question is how long does it take to discover an exoplanet? Well, we're finding exoplanets in a wide variety of sizes and distances from their own star and the distance from our own planet. So it could take anywhere between minutes if the planet is large enough and fairly separated from its star. And sometimes it can take years, especially if you use the technique referred to as the transit technique, where we look for a planet to traverse the face of the star, resulting in the, star, the star's light dimming. And uh, what we do is we wait for that occurrence to happen once, twice, three times. And that could take years sometimes to make sure that we absolutely found the planet and we weren't fooled by some other type of, of phenomenon. So it's the full range of, of, of times. Also, for thousands of years, humans have speculated that there may likely be planets around other stars. But it was only in 1995 that the first planet around another star was confirmed. 
And so since then, there have actually been thousands of exoplanets found. So this is a really exciting time uh, to be able to learn about these planets and discover uh, things that, that humans have speculated about for thousands of years. My name is Kaden. My question is, what are planets made of? Planets are made of many different substances, uh, some of which are very similar to uh, our own Earth. Planets are made of rock and lots of different kinds of dust. They're also made of, uh, a they also have a lot of gas, and it depends a bit uh, on the, the, the planet itself. We've found many different kinds of exoplanets. Some are very small and rocky, more similar to the Earth or Venus or Mercury. Um, and some of them are very large and more similar to the gas giant, giants in our, uh, our solar system, like Jupiter and Saturn. And some of them are different, even still, from those. Some are very large, much larger than Jupiter. Um, and some of them uh, are different uh, combinations of the, the sort of types of rock and gas that we find in our solar system. And so uh, we've actually been uh, amazed to, to discover the wealth of different kinds uh, of uh, materials on the other exoplanets in different combinations than in our own solar system. My name is Sid and then my question is, will you ever be able to have a person go to an exoplanet? Well, I certainly hope so. I, I really do hope that one day we will be able to send an astronaut to uh, an exoplanet. The, the sad news is today we don't yet have that technology. Maybe some of you at home will be able to play an important role at NASA to develop that technology to get us uh, to have that capability. Today, if we had to get into a rocket with our known technology, it would take probably about 80,000 years. So, so make sure you pack some extra socks and underwear. But uh, at, that, at, at those separations, we're going to have to develop technologies that will get us there much, much faster. So maybe Sometime in the future, we will, and I certainly look forward to that. I'm sorry, we run out of time. My thanks to Tiffany and Nick for answering students' questions. Thanks for having us. It was a lot of fun. Thank you. My thanks also to the folks at the Jet Propulsion Lab in California and the folks here at the Centennial Observatory for hosting us. If you want to learn more, check out the Exoplanets area on the Science Trek website. You'll find facts, links, games, our Exoplanets broadcast show, and lots more. And every week, check out my blog for the latest science news for kids, all at idahoptv.org. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on Science Trek, the web show. <laughs>